am Tobar the Ferryman, and this fine vessel is the Duchess Gambit. We're just back from Point Lookout, but it won't be long before we set off again. Interested? You look like a man who's been around the waist, so I'll cut right to it. In Point Lookout, you'll find fresh-grown food, mysterious locales, and treasures as of yet unlooted. But keep your wits about you, because you'll find more than a few exotic critters and inhospitable locals. So stay here if you're not man enough. You should have seen her back in her heyday, why we traveled up and down the coast from the Commonwealth to the Broken Banks. Good times, but these days she's not fit to take out to the coast. Too many spouts ready to drown her and too many critters looking for lunch. But the Point Lookout run is good enough for now. We've got a sweet deal ferrying cargo and the occasional traveler. Down south, this side of the bay, there's a soggy strand of beach called Point Lookout. Oh, it's got it all. Ruins of ancient pleasure towns, mysterious swamps bristling with treasure, and all practically untouched by outsiders. But if you're curious, I could offer you a ride over to that faraway land. For a nominal fee, of course. Down south. Now, I'm not normally one to discourage an adventurous spirit, but certain events have convinced me of the value of forewarning. I know you think you're ready for anything, but the threats you'll face in the swamp make those super mutants look like playful puppies. So just be sure you know what you're getting into, okay? You still want to head out to Point Lookout? Just don't come crying to me when a mire lurk is chewing on your guts. Once you've got a ticket, just head into the cabin and settle in on the cot. We'll be there in no time. Good travels to you. You! Are you going to Point Lookout? I need your help. My daughter stowed away on the Duchess Gambit a few weeks ago, and I've been worried sick ever since. I haven't heard anything from her, but if you're going there, could you look for her? Please, I'll do anything to help. Oh, bless you. Her name is Nadine, and she left a couple of weeks ago. Said she wanted to see the world. Silly little thing that she is. That Tobar said he dropped her off at Point Lookout, but who knows what's happened to her since then. I don't know if you can convince my little Nadine to come back, but just give her this note from me, would you? She's about your age, and when she left, her hair was dyed bright orange. You shouldn't have any problem recognizing her. She told me she wanted to go find her fortune, but I thought it was too dangerous. I should have known better than to say that. The moment I told her she couldn't go, it was just a matter of time before she ran off. Only that it's where Tobar gets those punga fruits he sells off. Must be making a good profit off of them, too. I hear rumors the place is full of swamps and killer plants, but I don't know about all that. Please, find my daughter. Ah, Nadine. Sprightly little tomboy with more curiosity than common sense, that one. <laughs> Caused so much trouble on the trip that I probably would have thrown her overboard <laughs> if she hadn't reminded me of myself at her age. I haven't seen her since we hit land at Point Lookout. But knowing her, I'll bet she's gotten herself in plenty of trouble. Good travels to you.
wasn't a point lookout, my friend. The trip was fine. The weather's nice and damp, and everything out there looks pleasant as ever. Looks like nothing's changed since my last visit, except all that smoke I saw on the way in. Oh, nothing much, just old Calvert Mansion. Just a huge abandoned estate teeming with who knows what opportunities for profitable scavenging. You know, nothing much. I know I said Point Lookout was perfect for treasure hunters, but it's a rare day when you get a beacon like that. You're staring at it, friend. Drink it in. See the glorious boardwalk, fabled pleasure town of the sunny past, and beyond it lies the haunted swamplands. Who knows what's hidden in them? But while you get your bearings, my friend runs an excellent supply shop right here near the boardwalk. Depends what you're looking for. If you need supplies, head to the shop over at the end of these docks. Convenient? And I get caps for referring you. If you need a place to stay, there's an old motel further into town. The beds there are still pretty soft, even if it's because they're full of lice. And if you're looking for some hunting, there's a fella named Plick who runs a club out in the Northeast. Strictly for high rollers, though. You. You're no tribal. Get in here and help me fight these bastards off, goddammit. from somewhere upstairs. Hurry, follow me. Go through these doors and up the stairs. Find where they are coming in. Get in here. Looks like they're about to breach from the East Wing. Hurry! Get in there before more of them come out. Find where they're coming from and stop them. Just like before, I'll be keeping an eye out. to get hit hard. Yeah, here they come. Grab all the ammo and stim packs you need. This is gonna be a rough one. 
If you have any minds, now's the time to use them. They could come in through any of the boarded up doors at any second. Hero, think you came in and rescued me right in the nick of time? Not hardly. Had it all well in hand, and I didn't even need to use the failsafe. But that would have done a real number on some of the paintings, so just as well you were here. Anyway, name's Desmond. No, but you helped me out, and that's something. Can't let you think I'm not a gracious host, can I? So, tell you what I'll do. I'll share a few tips for the next time you're making a dramatic final stand. Not a fucking clue. It'd be easy to chalk it up to their crazy religion. But if I'm right, and I always am, there's something else going on. That's the third attack in a month, so somebody's got a grudge with me. Whether it's a man or a god, I intend to set them straight. Damned if I know, it was abandoned when I got here. There's plenty hidden away here. None of it would be useful to a bunch of crazed inbreds. I've been around for a long goddamn time. The last time I knew a bird named Nadine, I still had skin. There was some girl who came nosing around here a few weeks back, but she ran off before I could introduce myself. I'm here on my own business. You wouldn't understand it even if I tried to explain it to you. I don't know why anyone would bother with this shithole. It's filled with a bunch of disgusting inbreds and half-crazed loons. I'm gonna do what I came to do, and then get the fuck out of here. They're brainless morons who worship some crazy spirit. What's to know? Now hold on there. Not so fucking fast. You can be useful to me. I need someone willing to get their hands dirty. So here's the deal. I help you get in with those tribals. You help me get what I want, and I'll make you fucking rich. Just try not to sprain a lobe while you're thinking about it. My time is short. You need to learn to pay attention when I speak. Those mud lovers want me dead and haven't extended the common fucking courtesy of telling me why. So, I need you to find a way into their commune and figure out what's going through their ad little heads. Be a good pup and old Desmond will give you a treat. And of course, who knows what riches they have for you to steal. Easy peasy. Right about now, they'll be wondering what happened to their hunting party. What? Like you've never done? Just head up to the cathedral and ask real nice. When you're in, you'll find the bastard in charge and find out what they're up to. 
I just need information. No need for violence. Yet. They're brainless morons who worship some crazy spirit. What's to know? I've been around for a long time. My story? Tell you what, kid. My story's a lot like a death claw's tongue. It's long, messy, and you don't want to get too personal with it. Understand? Suffice it to say, I have business in Point Lookout. If you help, you will be repaid for your efforts. That's all you want to fucking know. What's the difference between you and me, kid? What makes a gifted killer like yourself into a rock-hard bastard like me? The answer is training, you ignorant fuck! I've got a hundred years of experience on you, and don't you forget it. Stick by me and you'll get a master's class in doing what has to be done. Back to business. Who goes there? Who lingers at the threshold of transcendence? What's this? A humble traveler, seeking the guidance of our awakened minds. Truly this is a glorious day. You are from far away, and must be strong indeed to have traveled this far. But strength is nothing without the guidance of the enlightened mind. If you seek entry, you must be prepared to expand your consciousness. You must prove yourself worthy to transcend. You may not be so brave when you face the ritual of the Mother Seed. Stronger souls than you have attempted it and lost their minds. Venture west to the Great Bog, and within you shall find the Mother of all Punga Fruit. She stands taller than a man, and her vines guide our future. Collect her seeds, and kneel before her wisdom. Only then will you be ready to enter these sacred halls.
Congratulations, my boy. You're going to pull through, and everything will be right as rain. No, no, don't. No, no, don't. You are welcome to our tribe. Truly, the Mother Panga has bestowed her wisdom upon you, and your mind has been expanded. That is merely the sensation of your consciousness rushing to embrace its true potential. It is the feeling of having no boundaries, no limits. Yea, though your body will bear the scars of the ritual, your soul shall be forever strengthened by the experience. You are now welcome in our cathedral. Enter, enlightened brother. We espouse the expansion of the perfect mind and the rejection of the corrupt physical. The material world is destroyed and imperfect. We seek to release our minds from their tainted cages so as to find a better world. Leader, that would be Jackson, a man of great wisdom. He has withdrawn to his cavern of communion. It is a gift from the earth itself, in acknowledgement of our perfect balance with nature and the higher planes. She recognizes that we seek to leave behind the corrupt physical, and she nurtures us in our quest. Blessings to you on your journey. You are new, and you are welcome. I am Croatoa. I am not so new. Not here. We dream. Dream of a better world. Not falling apart like ours. And when we find a dream that makes us forget this world, 
We dream that we do not have to wake up. Look to Jackson. He is the one who knows. But do not strain to see him here. Jackson is away. That hill is holy. It must be cleared. Jackson told us this. Some went to fight. I stayed with Ponga. Ponga does not fight. Ponga grows where it can. Ponga knows what is important. Ponga grows strong. I help Ponga grow stronger. Ponga understands me. I understand Ponga. That is all it needs to be. I do not know if this is a secret, but I have always used this shovel. It has seen much work and much dirt. If it helps, have it. But be careful not to cut yourself. It can make you sick. Be well. A moment, please. Looks like another newbie in the tra- You still remember your name? Math? How's your memory? When I came back, there were bits in my memory where all I could recall was a white light and a jumble of voices. Crazy, huh? But you're not drooling, so you're doing okay. The rest weren't so lucky when they got their heads cut open. You sure you're feeling okay in there? You might want to check your head for a scar. We all get them after going to that bog. You know, the last part of the ritual. After you pass out, they get a guy to bring you back, cut open your skull, and free your mind. As in, he rips out a bit of your brain. It's supposed to be the part that holds you back, but that doesn't always work out so good. Anyway, you look like a lively one, so welcome to the tribe. My name's Nadine. Off at his magical thinking cave, I guess. We're not allowed to know where it is. He says we're not enlightened enough to understand. I swear that sort of stuff pisses me off so much. I thought joining would be all drugs and magic, but it's just the same crap as everywhere else. Guess that's why I trailed Jackson to his stupid mystery cave. I only been here a week or so, but I'm about ready to ditch this bunch of dummies. I already stole all the punga I could ever need. Hey, if you still want to know where Jackson's hiding, I can help you out. No reason for me to give a damn about this place, you know? His cave's under the cathedral, but it's hard to find. Use this key to get in through a wrecked ship down at the sea cliffs to the east. You're a lucky one, and it probably didn't do any permanent damage. Scar will heal up on its own, and you'll be good as new. Of course, you'll still be missing a chunk of brain, but it looks like you didn't need that bit anyway. Now hold still, and I'll see if I can help you look like your old self again. Yeah, it's all a little fuzzy for me, but... I've got a hunch. I'm gonna go do some snooping, see what I can figure out. Meet me by the riverboat in a day or so, and maybe I'll have something for you. Look, it's not 
that I don't want to go home or anything. I mean, I love my ma, even if she does make me want to claw my eyes out sometimes. It's just, I came out here to find a fortune, to make my mark, to be able to bring something with me when I do come back. If you see my mom again, let her know I'll be coming back eventually, just not quite yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That was all Jackson's crazy idea. I knew better than to volunteer for that suicide mission. Last time I wandered too close to that mansion, some old ghoul sicked his dogs on me. Screw that. What is this, a date? You start making a move and it's stabbing time. What? There's not much to say. I ran off from home to see the world and find a fortune. And I'm doing it now, okay? Well, there's not much to say. I ran off from home to see the world and find a fortune. And I'm doing it now, okay? Yeah, enough, Gavin. Let's move. You infiltrated those tribals. Nice work. As if sneaking into a compound of morons is any kind of work. So, why haven't you tracked down their leader and grilled him for info? Don't waste your time reporting back. Go find him and figure out what he wants with this place, you moron. My meditation requires utmost concentration. So you're the mouse that was scurrying around here? Not much to look at, but at least you're not drooling all over yourself. I can work with that. Now then, perhaps you can be more useful than that simpering spiritualist and his tribe of idiots. What you are interacting with is merely a holographic projection, and a rather clumsy one at that, but it's all I can manage at the moment. As for myself, you gaze upon one of America's greatest minds, preserved through the miracles of science! Much more elegant than shambling on as some rotting corpse for all eternity, don't you agree? Jackson believes me to be some kind of god. You'd think that would be good, but his interpretations of my commands leave something to be desired. Regardless, I trust you can be more effective than he has been. I need your help on an important task. There's a troublesome ghoul who lives in Calvert Mansion. I need him destroyed and his jamming device neutralized immediately. More than you could possibly imagine with your squishy pink mind. But the only pressing matter at the moment is a device in his possession. He has a jammer that limits my projection range to this pathetic cave. Remove that and I can extend my reach so much further. Killing Desmond would be a nice plus, but I'm sure we can get around to that later. Desmond, that bag of bones and bile will pay dearly for his trespasses. Were it not for his interference, I would still have a body. Still, its absence is only honed by brilliance, so perhaps I owe him my thanks. An appreciation I'll show in the form of a quick and messy death. <laughs> Of course I did, but that moron thought it was one of his adult visions. The real goal was to destroy the ghoul's jamming device. Honestly, those fools aren't worth the meat they're made of. A minion that can't follow directions is no use at all. Yes, away with you! Yes, fellow seeker? We are a family of dreamers. A band of astral explorers, and a church of the mind. In time, we will be free of the horrors of the base physical world. We will play amongst the pure thoughts of the universe. I know it may seem that I am a brave shepherd to my flock, but the truth is far more humble. I am nothing more than the largest fish in our school. As we swim through the astral seas, Exploring, learning, and...
and becoming one. But we are not swimming aimlessly. No, we have a beacon. The Shining Mind speaks to me in my meditations and guides us always. We take no pleasure in violence. Our goal was merely to remove the ghoul. His presence is an offense to the Transcendent Master's astral dominion. I cannot claim to understand the exact reasons that the mansion's resident caused such disruption, however. To understand fully, ask the Master. May you find your way. I knew it. I knew that little bastard was behind all this. After all these years, he stuck his head out, and this is my chance to cut it off. Figuratively speaking, of course. Him. I should have known. My old rival, so close to his family home. Only he would be so stupid. He was once a man, Professor Calvert. The Calverts owned half of Maryland, back when there was a Maryland to own. Members of the Calvert family were influential all over the world. They practically owned a deed to the U.S. government. In their best days, there were no less than three Calvert family senators, seven members of the House, and two governors. They even had a top candidate for president, until that scandal with the dog forced them to drop out of the race. I was particularly proud of that one. Calvert is my old rival. Centuries we've played this game. I knew he'd be stupid enough to hide so close to his family home. It's not a matter of hate. It's a matter of destiny. He is my enemy, and I do not suffer any bastard who opposes me to live. I knew he was here, and it is my intent to find him, and call down a righteous fucking hammer on his head. Figurative, I mean. His head. Of course I fucking want you to do something else. You don't expect me to trot around this mud hole myself, do you? Or oh, what? <laughs> you think I haven't been shot before? Think that you, over the thousands who have tried, can take me down? You'd best wise the hell up and play along. I'll get what I want, and you'll get rich, and then we can go about our separate goddamn ways. So, those half-wits are getting messages from the professor, right? So he's off somewhere, broadcasting to him. But without those buggers to do things for him, he can't do much for himself. So, we cut off his ability to talk to him, and he'll need to try harder. Maybe then I can find this squishy little worm and finish him off for good. If I know Professor Calvert, and I do. He's using a high-frequency cognitive sign broadcast. I have the perfect device to jam up his little talk box. All you need to do is take it to the highest point on the shore and install it. Easy, right? Well, that's just too bad, ain't it? But since you're so afraid, attach the thing to one of the cars and then spin it around to get it to the top. I'll watch from here, and turn it on when it's ready. Then we'll see where our little professor is. Now go! You again? Shouldn't you be- Well, get on with it. We haven't got a lot of time, you know. Were you not paying attention? I need you to take that cogwave jammer over to the ferris wheel by the docks. Attach it to one of the cars, then raise it as high as it will go. That's the only way we'll be able to shut off the professor's ability to talk to those simple bastards who work for him. At some point, Professor Calvert developed the ability to speak inside people's heads. Problem is, he's not so good at it. 
He's using something to boost his power and talk to those tribal simps. The fools think he's God or something. Once I jam up his signal, he won't be able to get them to do what he wants, and I'll be able to find where the little fuck is hiding. You saw it. He uses his device to talk to their soft-headed leader in those caves. They think he's a fucking god, and they do what he wants. The blighters are too stupid to get it right most of the time, but seeing as how they figure to attack me here, Calvert is getting close. But if their god goes silent, then they won't be a problem anymore, now will they? Well, I'm glad I could be of fucking help to you. Now get out of here, go! It is I, Professor Calvert. Don't bother looking around, I am in your mind. But aren't you Desmond's faithful little employee? Coming to gum up my work, are we? Well, I have a better idea. How about instead of playing his game, you destroy that nasty little device? Deposit it in the nearby trash compactor, and we will never have to worry about it again. I assure you that the gratitude of Professor Calvert is worth a great deal more than that of a washed-up old limey. you would make the right choice. And now it is time for Desmond to meet his end. He's made a fatal mistake. Return to Calvert Mansion. I have something there that I'd like you to see. You bastard! Betray me, you fuck! You think you can betray me? You have one chance, exactly one chance to fucking redeem yourself in my eyes. We are going to go in there, and we are going to end this once and for fucking all. And you will help, or you will be my enemy. And you do not want to be my enemy. Well now, finally you show some goddamn sense. So, if you're on my side, why did you destroy my jammer? And you? Impressive. Very impressive. Perhaps there's more to you than meets the eye. I suppose I had you wrong, and that in itself is a once-in-a-lifetime event. Brace yourself, my friend. You're about to witness the end of an era.
The world is rid of that sniveling, disgusting, arrogant brain. Think of it. Everything he learned, everything he had, it's all here, and it's all mine. Mine. Moron. You cannot possibly comprehend what this is worth. I've been battling with Calvert for over 200 years, and now at last, I am the victor. And now, 200 years of technology, knowledge, and research that he stole from me. Every time he beat me, it doesn't matter now. You're free to take whatever you find in this disgusting place. What I came for is of no interest to you. Enjoy your spoils. I don't think our paths will ever cross again, and I think we can both thank Christ and say hallelujah for that. I'm busy. I'm pulling all the data that I can from Calvert's computers. Everything the little bastard gathered is here. And then, when I'm done, I'll leave this place to sink into the sea. Now that we're rid of Calvert, I'll be heading north to pursue my next rival. There are only a few of us left now. The great game goes on. Sort of a... Uh, what's a word you'd understand? Microcosm? Yeah. It's a microcosm for the old world. Piss off. Just in time. Found out who went rooting around in our skulls, and you'll never guess who it was. As a totally unrelated hint, I'm in charge of his boat now. I consider it payment for what he did to my poor sliced up brain. I was gonna do the same to him, but I figured you'd want the honor. Seems that when the tribals would send someone to the swamp, He'd be waiting around to nab him when the Pungaseeds gassed him. He'd do his amateur surgery for the tribals and let us wander back, all in exchange for Punga fruit to trade. Sweet little deal he had going on. <laughs> Sounds pretty wacko, right? 
Well, I wouldn't have believed me either until I snuck a peek in Tobar's engine room. From the look of it, he kept every bit of gray matter he cut out, and he had quite a collection. You can take a look if your stomach's up to it. And while you're in there, feel free to give Tobar my love, preferably with the sharp end of a hot knife. Damn right. Now why can't the rest of the world figure that one out? So that leaves me with a boat, a load of punga, and a wicked scar. Damn if I haven't earned that adventure I came out looking for. Think I'll take over running this ship. I can travel as I like and always head back to the wasteland to see Mom. Not a bad way to live, huh? Of course, you can always ride for free. Now that I've got this sweet boat, I guess I can head back home. For a while, anyway. Just wait till Mom sees the haul I'm bringing home. Yeah, enough, Gavin. Let's move. Well, if it isn't my favorite traveler, and oh, what a trip you were on. Why, when you were under, you should have heard some of the things that came out of your mouth. But I suppose you're more interested in what came out of your head, aren't you? Why do we do anything? You travel the world, kill people, take trophies that interest you, and move on. I'm much the same. The only difference is that my trophies are somewhat more medical in nature. Oh, and to be honest, I probably kill fewer people than you do. But I suppose it's time that came to an end, one way or another. It isn't our hero. Yes, thank you so much. And now that she's got this boat and carrying all this cargo, well, I can afford to actually pay you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your help. <laughs> 